This here, and then we'll put. Um, which one did I put? Oh yeah, this one. That. Okay. All right. Exit. Nice. I really, really need to find a a, a spot. Mine is dead. Every wire is cut. I hate the season. Huh. Interesting. They wanted the season to change because they were so alone. Mm. Yeah, I won't be able to go up there. So those are the phones, see? Like... I don't know if there's stuff like outside of the of the beaten path. I'm not sure. Oh. Oh well, well I'm out of the rain at least. Ooh. One melody is like me out here alone. They use these music boxes to fall asleep. I wonder if I can. Can I take it with me? No. Too bad. Oh. One voice, one tune alone in the wilderness can't last last long. Two voices, a melody, and a harmony is, an, is enough to survive a little while. Three voices, a community, a song can last a whole season. They kept themselves company with music. Wow. Another one. Is it the same thing? Two voices is like me and my mom. Huh. We can survive. But eventually, you need more. Oh, you have to do it three, all three. Wow. Three voices as complex as life is supposed to be. I could listen forever. Whoa. Now, how do I pass further? Oh. I'm not sure what that means. They used the walls like I use my journal. <laughs> True. Okay, where do we go? Uh, huh. Not sure, guys, where we go. Where for me to go? Uh, 
Oh yeah, I think there's a crack there. Let me see. I saw a spot here. We're just gonna take my bike like that. I think there's an entrance there. I just can't go fast when I'm just making my bike like that. Is there an exit there, guys? Did I see that probably? Yes! Nice. Alright. Whee! What was that? What is this? Oh, it's just a pillar. I met a driver from a group that's building community. I'm leaving with them. Goodbye to this lonesome place. Goodbye to this lonesome season. Huh. Looks like they made it out of here. But what is this group? Yeah, I'm not sure. I am not sure. Oh my gosh, I'm really going to get this straight. It's shift I'm supposed to do. I keep doing space. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Three hours later. Hee <laughs> hee. At Hing Valley Exit 45. Uh, the problem is when you leave a spot, it goes away. You, you, you can't put more pictures or nothing. So I probably will like to put all the stuff that I want on here. Uh, I just noticed that the bike has a weird setup, a cruiser with a drop bar. Uh, I guess so? I don't know. Whoa! I'm gonna have to take a break, guys. Wow. I don't know what you guys think about this game. In the empty places, so I found good. companionship in the tapes I recorded before leaving home. The elder told me the story of her life. Damn. I listened back to it, ready to note down anything that seemed important. Let's set the scene for the listener, whoever that might be. This is the elder speaking. We're sitting in the plaza, saying goodbye to a dear soul. We're here to see if there's anything useful in my mind that could help you on your trip. A century's worth of memories, dreams, fantasies, visions. Like a big, old, haunted library, when I die, this library will burn down. 
But which book should we check out first? I don't have all the answers, but I do feel the story of my life could help you understand what kind of world is out there. It's okay not to understand everything right away. The moment may pass before you've gotten a firm hold on it. But as long as you're there to witness it, to take it down in your journal, you and others to come will someday take the time to make sense of it all. First, I got old. That's an important step. <laughs> Being an elder is all about how you react to strange events. The key is not to be surprised, but kind of frown. Look serious. Uh, drop bars are supposed to be the riders in more aerodynamic but uncomfortable position. Clues are designed to be more comfortable. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And say something like, It begins. Never say, I don't know. Uh -uh. Say, We dive into a pool of uncertainty. Wow. Where were you born? I was born on the ocean. My mother and father worked on a cruise ship, a short-lived but glorious, watery republic, floating cities. Most won their independence by the time I was born. How can I describe them? They were a jewel of the golden season, pleasure boats with a radical political program. How nice. The golden <laughs> age was a time of flags, logos, mottos, mastheads. My mom taught me to read them. She was a ship's philosopher. My dad was a recycling engineer. Recycling on the ship was a matter of life and death. We had to get the most out of every object and lot of energy. <laughs> um, tell me more about your dad. He struggled against waste and entropy. It was a never-ending puzzle of inputs and outputs. The waste of one system could be the source material for another. It was stressful work. I remember one time asking him what the trouble was. He said, I'm trying to create a system that is more efficient than the human body, which had millions of years to evolve and still has vestigial organs and dies if it doesn't have water for three days. His name was Murat Kale. I loved the way the ship would tilt and roll with the waves, especially as I fell asleep. It was so comforting. Picture me as a kid in bed feeling the swaying of the ship. It was like being rocked to sleep as a baby. I loved exploring the ship, too. wandering through the suites, the swimming pool, the game rooms, and oh, there were two dance halls, a large, elegant one and another one in the basement. A lot of my firsts were down there, my first dance, my first kiss, and so forth. Our ship was taken over in the early days of the war. That was the end of the watery republics. I heard the dance hall in the basement became a weapons cachet. Took me half my life to say goodbye to the world I knew in my youth. Imagine me and my parents and everyone I knew being escorted off the ship by a company of soldiers. And I'm thinking, I hope they don't make a mess of my room. I was embarrassed by the younger kids who were crying their eyes out, but they knew, I guess. What did you think was happening or what was the end season? Was that the end of the season? Yes, the start of the war was a turning of seasons and we had been warned the season was going to end. Oh, but we didn't understand the warning. You see, one night along a coastline, we saw beautiful lights shimmering above the water. Later, we found out this was an ancient warning system. It hadn't been used in so long. We didn't know what it meant. We just thought, well, ain't that pretty. We tried to stick together and camped out on the coast of the prismatic grounds. A kingdom of art and science. They got rich during the golden season. Everything that made them beloved before the wealth came. Passionate, uncompromising, self-obsessed made them unbearable once they had power. Artists make terrible kings. Are you sure you want me to keep going? The story gets darker from here on. I know, I want to know more. Thank you very much. Okay, so conditions in the camp were getting worse. My mom got lost in thought for long periods of time. She'd be completely still for hours, days even. We realized she caught, well, now we call it time misperception disorder. 
It's when you lose your ability to tell how much time is passing. A minute can feel like an hour. A day can pass in 10 seconds. We don't know exactly. Our consciousness is delicate. There are minerals and sounds that can adjust it. Dr. Fumio's greatest fear was that someone would use this as a weapon. We heard about a traveling doctor who could cure these kinds of diseases. I decided to go find him. I found out his name was Dr. Fumio, and he traveled with his son, Lucio. People talked about him like he was a god. Hey, Craig. Have a happy lurking, happy lurking. <laughs> uh, what happened when you, what was going on with the war? The prismatic grounds had roped almost everyone into their system until they reached the far wastes and heard no for the first time. Nobody reacted well. It got to the point of, you know, neighborhood against neighborhood. Grievances had been buried so deeply we forgot they were there. It felt like things changed overnight. I'd pass wow. through a city and hear later that they'd torn each other apart. Ugh. I could not imagine it. Damn. I described my mom's condition to Dr. Fumio. He said there was no cure yet, but there was a village high in the mountains. He thought it was high enough he'd have a better chance at treatment. Lower huh. places are more dangerous. Valleys are the worst. He invited me to join oh. them in going to the village, but I wanted to go back and get my parents and bring them with me. I'm not trying to that. What happened next? I packed my things and got ready to leave the next morning. That night, my mom came to me in a dream. She was standing in a field of flowers. I promise as I last saw her, we were the same height. She pressed a finger hard into my palm. She taught me well. I knew the meaning of the gesture. I knew no matter what I did, I'd never see my parents again. Oh, Sam. In the morning, I told Dr. Fumio I would follow him to Carroll Village. The next few weeks were very physically tiring, hiking, climbing. And when we found the village, building, planting, cleaning, mm. Fumio brought sick people from all over the world, and they got better. The treatments oh. worked. Everyone was healing, so why couldn't I? One day, we got word the war was over. We never found out how it ended. It was like peace just swept over the earth in a split second. Wow. There was a party in the plaza to celebrate the end of the war. But I couldn't bring myself to go. Yes, it was over. But it had taken my home, my family. That yeah. night, as I was falling asleep, I felt the bed tilt and sway gently, as if it was being tossed on the waves of the ocean, as if I was back in my bedroom on a ship. As if I was back in my mother's arms, being rocked gently to sleep. I knew I was finally home. And nothing could hurt me. Oh, wow. These backstories are amazing. Such a beautiful game. Wow. Oh, I love indie games, seriously. I imagine coming upon a place as hidden and singular as my own village. Oh, three reliable Eventually, gods. I found myself circling a valley, looking for a way in. Wow. This is so cool. All right, I need to take a quick bio break. I'll try to find a nice view or something. There a view here? It's too much fog, eh? Okay. Let me do this. And I'll be right back, guys. I'll take a quick bye you break. A quick bye you break. Oh, not that. Why is this crooked? It's not really. Alright. Alright, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, guys. Yeah. I'm back. I am back. I don't know how long is this game. Not sure. Okay, I think I already have that. I'll just take a picture anyway. This valley is asking people for a visit. I should oblige it. Thank you. 
All right. Whee! Oh boy. I should go to bed soon, yeah, no problem. No problemo. That's a... How'd you call that again? This thing? This is a truly enormous, impassive oh, structure. Jam? In English? Stop here. Oh. Have a safe ride. Thank you. Have a good sleep. Chain Valley. A gift from the Prismatic Ground, the Electric Peace Project, year 515. We never use this kind of technology in my village. Nobody trusted it. Huh. Interesting. Okay. This is so cool. There's a lot of mist here. Uh oh. I'm a fan of mists. Whoa. I wonder if we're gonna meet anybody. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, snap. Uh. Is there. Must be a car, but it looks weird. I haven't seen one like this in my books. Huh. I wish. Oh wait. What's got? Oh, another person. Look at that. Gather around the gray something. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the valley. Um. One second. What? What is going <laughs> Gather around the gray hand? Flood zone. Okay, I would like to uh, maybe record this. I've heard sounds that can heal the mind. It feels like this noise would do the opposite. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, there you go. Is that a strodo fop? Uh, what, what are they called? A strodo? What? What is it? I'm not sure what you're talking about. My recorder? I love old gear like that. It's getting more and more rare. I, I had a camera, but it broke. Not that interesting of a story, I guess. What are you doing here? Um, I'm here to experience the moment. I'm here to observe and record the world. The whole thing, huh? Yep. You're young. You, you've got time. What kind of stuff are you recording? Um, hopefully people in their culture, animals and landscape, whatever catches my interest. That's the way to do it, if you ask me. If anyone asks me, I mean... The valley would be a good place to use those tools. Okay. Too bad it's closed down. What? Let me finish up here, huh? Is he a nice person or a bad person? I don't know. Okay. All right. Let me uh, let me do what I wanted to do here. Hey. What? I'm not 
done here, man? This was like a second home for a while. Oh. That was fun earlier when you showed up. And I was carrying the cardboard man. You were like, who are these guys? <laughs> I don't think I haven't seen a lot of people I've lately. I've been pretty bored here. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> you know, the valley's going to be flooded soon. Okay. That's why nobody can go in there. Oh. The dam is falling apart. But I want to go. What's wrong with the dam? It's too old. Oh. There's nobody left who knows how to repair it. We're taking it down so we'll know when it'll collapse. <gasps> it gives us time to evacuate everyone. Okay. Who is we? Greyhounds. Okay. We're a community organization. Oh. We do all kinds of fun stuff. Health <laughs> clinics, mine sweeping, daycare, evacuations, weddings. Holy crap! Everything. We're new. What is Grey Hand supposed to mean? Quite an like, uh, eclectic list of service. It was supposed to be because we're helpful yet neutral. Okay. We took a vote and decided to change the name though. We want something more friendly sounding. I'm excited to find out what it would be. We're trying to get new things going. But it's hard. The past really has a tight grip on people. It doesn't feel like a fair fight. So we're trying to, well, uh anyway. <laughs> it's funny. I stood guard here for a week, and I've only seen greyhounds like myself and valley people on their way out. But now I see you, and you're like a... A what? New element or something. What? I've never met anyone doing what you're doing. And uh, we greyhounds got to support new things. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to let anyone in. Oh. How can I... Jeez. Jeez. I think you should go down into the valley and take a look. Gotta try oh. something here. <laughs> okay. Dang it. I was trying to wink. Well, <laughs> you get the idea. Go on what and a put funny that old dude. dude. You what can a... take my map of the valley, too. <gasps> I don't need it anymore. Oh, we have a map. Sweet. Wait, can I take a picture of I'll you? I'll be down to pick everyone up around midnight. I'll be down to pick everyone up. Okay. See you then. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Uh. I met a gray hand. He let me into the valley. I think he wanted me to record what the gray hands were up to. Okay. And he gave me a map. <gasps> Whoa! The assembly point seemed like a good place to start. Whoa, that's pretty big. Okay. I wonder what he expects me to discover in the valley. I don't know. Stranger encounter. The elder didn't think I'd see any flags. This could be a sign that the season is changing. A skeletal version of the kind of billboard I saw earlier. Uh-huh. What is that? This looks ancient. Yeah. It's like a monolith. It must have been hard to carve a pattern like that into a rock. The gateway to Tiang. Here stands the gateway to Tiang Valley, home of the three mindful gods. As you enter, try to imagine the millions of pilgrims who passed under this gate before. They were born, they live, and they die. Okay. I'm not the first to do this. Just the first in a long time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please respect their... Residents of Ting Valley, they are not actors or tourist guy or animal, but hardworking folks. Please collect all trash or debris from the concessionary stand before leaving. This garbage not only clutters the pristine valley, but is offensive to the local people who do not eat mass processed food or drinks. Okay. Uh, I'll think about what kind of visitor I want to be. <laughs> okay, I kind of want a picture of that. 